God is good and all the time. Man, I'm just so grateful for the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm just so grateful. And just, uh, man, great words from all the brothers and, uh, and uh, what they shared from Sawa to Tim to the, all these guys. I'm just so encouraged that you're allowing the Holy Spirit to use you and, uh, and share with us. And uh, thank you so much, Elder. Uh, for, for uh, your words about the contribution and uh, yeah, we cannot express gratitude enough. Uh, you, you, you would be heart wrenched if you know how many churches have closed because of the pandemic. Uh, people stopped giving. People just lost faith and hope. And uh, I'm just grateful that we have not. You know, we have not. You know, and I'm very grateful. It is just uh, very encouraging. Um, and and, and uh, our elders told you the truth, and he said, they looked at me like, uh, I know we got a pandemic, but where's our money? <laughs> uh, and yet, they, uh, I found out later, we, not only did we not miss the beat, but we was the only one paying them. Wow. The only one. On, Look at my God. <laughs> and how I found out, because the property manager told me so. She called me and said, man, we're... I don't know why we would ever give y'all a hard time. I said, what's going on? Because y'all the only one paying us. Amen. You know, and it, it was tough for a lot of people. And it was tough for us. Uh, but God provided. Yeah. And God gave us real disciples. That my wife would say, we're really Christians. We're not, we're not faking Christianity. We're Christians. Uh, I heard from a, a church last week, uh, one that we know very well. They're trying to find members. Uh, not in Jacksonville, a church, one of a church we know very well out of town. They're they looking for their members now. They begin to come back with mass and they don't know where their members are. You know, and uh, guys, we got a lot to be grateful for, a lot to be thankful for, and a lot to, uh, to praise God for. And I want us to continue to grow, not only in our giving, but we need to grow in our not ever showing favoritism. I had that time in my quiet time this morning I read the whole book of James and it just not man it hit me right in the heart it, it, he said uh, Jesus told James uh, you know there should never be favoritism in the church no matter what somebody got how much money they got what clothes they wear it doesn't matter never favoritism we are Christians and I'm like wow and I, I feel that's what God has help us become and so family let's keep growing in that listen I want to give you a charge before I introduce our speaker to, to preach I want to give you a charge don't ever come to church and sit down without speaking to numerous of your brothers and sisters <laughs> numerous giving love respect glad to see you what can I pray for what can I pray for you in what do you need that I get on my knees for God for you uh, here's one you could be praying for uh, today it's good to see Louisa here amen uh, Willie they praying that today they can take the tubes out of Willie and he, and he can eat from his mouth is that right Louisa so y'all be praying that God will help Willie they can take the tubes out and he can eat and gain and be feed himself instead of being fed through a tube Family, there's a lot to be praying for. I pray that every one of you have spoken to Willie. Not Willie in hospital. Maybe you can leave him a message. But Louisa, she's here. Ask, what can I be praying for? What do you need? Sister, I, I'm your family. How can I help? And don't ever think prayer is not helpful. You should never say what she said, well, just pray for this. Well, is there anything else? What's more powerful than God? What is more powerful than the man God, our Lord God Almighty? And if you ever said that, repent. Don't ever think there's something more powerful than God. You mentally think it's not, but your words can say it is. You're thinking something different. And I, hey, we need to be prayed up for one another and keep each other prayed up. It's Garrett, good to have Daryl and Primate here today, amen? <laughs> Brother, we've been praying. And I'm just so encouraged that God allow you to walk through these doors. 
Thank you, God. And I, my God, my God. God is good and all the time. Sometimes we think we got our little issues and there's more people with much more trying times than you. And we got to understand that church, amen? And trust God in all these things. And know God can get us through. I ain't going to say nothing more about God getting us through because my brother, I think he'll be going to preaching on that a little bit. And, uh, but I, I'm excited about what God has given us. I thank God every day. Thank you for letting me be part of the RCC. River City Christian Ministry. Thank you for allowing me to be the minister, man, and my wife, the woman's ministry. Thank you, God, that we have deacons. Thank you, God, we have elders. God, I'm just so grateful for each and every one of them. Thank you about singles and teens. Praise the Lord. I pray that we all be doing that for each other. Uh, I, we all, we, we, I thank God for Ebony and thank God for Reuben. They became Christians. I pray God for more. Hey, man, I pray for more. I pray for Silhouette. You know, I, I pray for, what's your name again? Keon. Keon. And listen, I'm glad God know who I be talking about because I don't say Keon all the time. I, I'm glad God know more than me. But he knows who I'm talking about. And be praying. Danielle, I pray for you this week. We're praying that God will meet all your needs. Only our Lord God can do that. I missed Pretron last week. I prayed for you. See, are you aware of what's going on? Or you just come sit in the pew and go home? Let's have a heart for our brothers and sisters. I'll be preaching next week. So let me, I'm getting there. I'm ready. <laughs> Amen. But come on up, Brian. Brian going to be bringing the message today. I'm so in, in fired up and excited about my brother Brian. I remember when he came, him and his wife, Darcelle, and if that little boy give you uh, some fuss, you let one of us take him. You stay here with your husband. I want you to be here before he can feel you. We got him. Yeah. Family got him. We got him. I'm in the back. I just, just point him to me. I got him. And uh, uh, yeah, I hear you. No, don't let him, let him. Hey, praise the Lord. I told him to clap for his dad. He started clapping. Now he's throwing his dad's kisses. <laughs> Hey man, that's awesome. And, uh, but I, I'm really excited about it, Brian. I remember when Jamie uh, introduced me to him at a football game. Took, we went to a football game. He said, man, Mark, he's been reaching out. He said he's coming to church, him and his wife. And then he came and went to our house and we studied. And uh, I, I remember there was something that his old minister gave him that wasn't biblical. And I showed it to him in the Bible. And Brian says, oh my God. He said, Mark, I'm going to have to go in my own conscience, I got to go speak to them about this. I say, amen. I said, now, you better be praying about it and be humble. Don't be arrogant, because it can, it can go south. Just let the Bible speak for itself. Amen. amen. <laughs> Brian, I can clap it. I said, let the Bible speak for itself. And then let me know if you want to keep studying. Man, next day, he called me and said, I, I'm coming back. I said, did you speak? Yep. And they want to hold on to what is not biblical. And I said, I'm glad that you came to those convictions on your own. And now your brother stand before you and get ready to preach the word of God. Amen. 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 How many of you have been a Christian now? I don't know. Since August 20, 2017, so four years. Four years. Amen. And amen. Amen. I thank God that God used you, Jamie, and y'all was playing football together, all you guys. In fact, your kids was playing together. Same organization. Same organization. So that was who? Cam and uh, uh, no, Josiah, y'all. Oh, that's right. When I went to the game, I, I went to two different. Yep, I went to two different game watch. I remember that now. But there was the same organization, you know. So man, look, look, look what God used you rascals to do. Uh huh. They thinking, oh, you use me? Yeah. <laughs> Put you in the same organization so they can find Jamie and become Christians. So you didn't even think of that, did you? But hey, hey, man, Josiah said, no, I ain't think like that. But he did. God orchestrated all that. And then I, for me to meet. My brother, and then he said on uh, August 13th, 1988, he was born. I went, what? That's when we got married. He was born the day we got married, my wife and I. Thought that was the coolest thing. I'm like, wow. I said, now you should, I'm, my age is really showing now. But that's great. And then after that, I found on May 10th, the day that Vanita was born, her birthday is your anniversary. I'm like, okay, God meant for us to get together. 
He meant for this to happen. And so with no further ado, I look forward to you hearing our brother come and preach the word of God. Let's pray that we will receive it and have humble hearts and that God will be glorified. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I pray that we receive it and have humble hearts and that through his words, you will be glorified. God, I pray that we have the heart to give you all that you want and we won't hesitate and open our hearts towards your word. Let us be convicted, encouraged, and called higher. It's in your son's name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning, church, again. Sorry, I had to get everything going on. I thank God for another day, being able to worship, share his um, word amongst one another. Even with the way things are, you know, going out in the world, what's happening these days, God is still making a way. My name is Brian Vereen. I'm a member here that serves at the RCC, and I have the honor and privilege to share God's word with you this morning. I want to say thank you to our leadership for giving me this opportunity. So I want to start, by, start off bringing you that difficult times can over, overwhelm us, consume our thoughts, and impact our emotions. Sometimes, though, God is using the hardship to bless us. So getting kind of personal, I'm, I, I like to get personal. So the past few weeks I spent uh, doing my training at a site called Camp Blend. It's where you go do your little an annual if you're in uh, like National Guard or whatever. But I was away from a lot of distractions that I would deal with on a, like every day. You know, I was able to communicate with like my wife and kids. Like if she needed something, she can easily hit me. Call may drop every now and then. Uh, you know, if you got an iPhone, you send a text, the blue is stop, and then it'll go like five minutes later, it was doing stuff like that. But, um, you know, I love football. You know, I go on social media, all that. But I say that to say, you know, those are, you know, some everyday distractions. Um, you know, it wasn't accessible to me at the time. And even though I was miserable at times because on my downtime, it was like, like actually dead silent. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm glad it wasn't accessible because I was able to med uh, meditate and reflect on God's word and look over my life. Amen. So I remember I say this, um, I say things to myself like, man, we're in some crazy times. Uh, I never imagined the world operating the way it is right now. Like the chaos, the how people just conform to what's going on. Um, and you know, like men, it's, it's common that we carry things and not tell, nobody, tell no one about it. Uh, I used to do it all the time, and it was before I left. I, I, was, we was in our, no, I was in my bathroom, my wife was in the living room. And you know, usually sometimes when you're feeling overwhelmed, you're going to your own way of handling it. But you know, me and my, my wife, we've been married for six years. And I learned that that's not a healthy way to handle things. And you can feel the disconnect when something's wrong and it can stir up something else. The devil like to use that. So, hey amen. So I called her. I called her like three times before I think she heard me. But uh, I called her and she was like, what's wrong? And I was just wanting to talk. And I usually don't get overwhelmed a lot, but this time I was. Um, with the whole like COVID thing that was going on, it hit, it hit, it hit hard in our house. And having the kid, put the kids, our kid, we never had to put one of our um, kids in a, a daycare, um, thank God, but this year we did. And just thinking about that, it was just a lot of stuff going on, plus outside stuff. And I had broke down, we talked, and it was so much power in us talking and us praying. And I just thank God for that. But <clears throat> the words, you know, that I'm about to say, I'm pretty sure we don't read them, we don't heard them. And it, but it just kept replaying in my head when I was uh, med when I was meditating, when I was away. And um, the words was, "He'll never give us more than we can handle Amen. with His power, not ours." Right. So, go on, Let's go ahead and read First Corinthians. Chapter 10, starting at verse 13. 
It reads, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, it says he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And now I show the title of the message it is Blessed in Difficult Times. Amen. 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 Let's read, let's go to, um, let's go read Proverbs 3, starting at verse 11, end at verse 12. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplined those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. So reading that, there, there have been times in my life and I wonder about the Lord's discipline. Exactly how does his discipline work? Uh, why does he do it? Like, how do I know that I'm not getting punished for something I did, like a sin I committed or is this something I'm just supposed to go through? Um, let's go to Hebrews 12, verse 7. Come on, come on. Amen. Amen. And it reads, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? Amen. And just to give you the definition of endure, it means to tolerate, suffer patiently, to, to last. This scripture reveals that God disciplined us through difficult circumstances. So I want to touch on, touch on three areas that these circumstances can come from. And these three areas help me a lot with coming to fix my heart, the way I think, the way I just move. Um, ever since, um, like Mark said, I, I wanted to study the Bible. And so was, I was baptized in August. I'm pretty sure it was about four weeks or something. So 2017, July, July 2017, something like that. Um, so, like I say, let's, I just want to cover some areas uh, that circumstances can come from. And the first one is uh, the circumstances can come from our sin. So let's, let's really be open to this and hear, and hear this. I think it might help a lot of us. So sin is a universal problem with humans. Something we all do, whether if it's unintentional and you had to repent or if you was just doing it blatantly but you ever stopped and asked why 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 am I sinning or why did I just do it? if like I said if it was intentionally or unintentionally why can't we make a constant decision not to sin and then never again disobey God so the the Apostle Paul expressed our frustration with sin in Romans 7 verse 15 going to verse 20 And it reads, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is the sin living in me. For I know that good itself doesn't dwell in me. That's it. It is in my sin for nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but, not, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin living in me that does it. And thank God, it's okay because we're not alone. I'm going to tell you why. Go to Matthew 26, verse 41. It says, watch and pray so that you will not fall in temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We have the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why the Bible, that's why the word tells us we have to be led by it. Making a conscious effort, I mean, a conscious effort to deny this ugly flesh every day. Let's turn to Romans 8, verse 7. Excuse me if I found, sound kind of congested. My sign is bothering me. Amen. It reads, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. 
Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. So let's get some help. Let's go to 2 Corinthians verse 10. I mean, chapter 10, verse 5. This will help us. It says, we demolish arguments and every pretensions that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to um, Christ. Because it, it all started in the mind, right? So how do we, make our, how do we take our, um, our thoughts captive? Taking your thought captive, taking our thoughts captive means choosing what you allow to take root in your mind. What you allow yourself to see, what you allow yourself to hear. Uh, this looks like asking God for guidance, picking up a phone, calling another brother or sister. Um, turning from sinful sources. You know, we got the Internet. It has everything on there that you don't want to see. Uh, behaviors and maintaining a continual relationship with Scripture, reading your word. So we're not perfect, but you got to remember perfection it focuses on the outcome, but excellence focuses on the process. We're, we're a process. As an athlete, you know, I played sports for a good amount of my life, and I often heard, we are what we repeatedly do. In practice, we go over many reps of doing something over and over and over. They call perfect, they, they say, uh, perfect your craft. That's what they say. And if this is the case, then excellence is not a single act, but a habit we put into practice. So, talking about being Christians, let's be people who live a life of excellence and do so for the Lord. Amen. 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 So when we do this, the way we live our lives will be a testimony to those around us. Like I say, we're a billboard for uh, 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 those who, are, who aren't Christians. And represent the name of Jesus in his kingdom well. So, we talked about our sin. Uh, another circumstance is uh, some, someone else's sins that affects, that affects us. Yeah, right. You might be a single parent. What you do might affect your children. I'm a husband. What I do might affect my wife and my kids yeah. and those who are surrounding me. Right. Everybody um, here in the church, you know, uh, another one just comes from the trouble of life. Yeah. Matthew 6, 34. Yeah. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day I have enough trouble of his own. You know, I read that, you know, plenty of times, but growing up, uh, still today, you always say grandma, your parents, it's always something. Uh, dang, well, there it is right there, I just told you. Every day got enough trouble of his own. So be expecting it, just be ready, you know? Don't be weak towards it. Yeah. So the world is it's in a fallen state opposed to the things of God. Yes. Um, the daily attempts to take our focus off our creator. Um, not only we must fight the world as we grow as Christian, but we might, all, we, we have to fight the, um, the fight of the flesh, you know, That's dealing right. with our flesh. Right. All right? right? So, out of our sins we commit, sins that other people commit, and the trouble of life, which one we have a better chance of fixing? I say the first one. And that helped me a lot. You can't control what other people do. You can pray for them. Excuse me. <clears throat> you can't control what tomorrow brings, but you can fix you. And that's enough. You know, I notice you cannot possibly experience and witness the fullness of God I know when me and brother, brother uh, Ray uh, pray sometimes, he talk about that. Talking about being able to sp sp experience in God's in, his, in the fullness. Yeah. Uh, if you're around here living your life all type of way, you hindering yourself from what he yeah. have for you. Yeah. So when I started studying the Bible and wanted to be a Christian, I, I began to see the depth of sin in my life. Because yeah. I had the Bible right there and then I was comparing it and putting up against God's word. I began to see the, the darkness of my heart. Um, just gotta remember, before I became a Christian, uh, I'm from Jacksonville, I grew up on the north side. I was exposed to a lot of street, street stuff, you know? And with that, 
you, you can have a street mentality besides going to school and someone who's, you know, setting a good example here and there. But for the most part, you consume to what you're seeing out there in the, the neighborhood. Yeah. And, um, you know, me, I was, I was solid with mine. You know, I'm still a quiet guy, but you never knew what I was doing. So I can be deceitful, you not know it. Uh, you know, I, I can plot and no one know it. And just bringing that to the word of God, I see how dark and dangerous I was because that I was on the road that led to, to death. They say the wages of sin is death, right? So we take more notice of the, we have to take more notice of the secret sins that the neighbor can't see, that no one can't see the, the hatred, the envy, um, quickly angered, uh, always want to speak before, listen, before listening, um, and all the other attitudes that God for, uh, forbids. But I know now if I want to grow spiritually, I must be able to, I must be adamant on putting these things to death and developing godly affection, affection such as contentment, peace, joy, love, and so forth. God can use any difficult circumstance to discipline us. Amen. To endure hardship, as discipline says, we need to trust God has our best interests in mind. Yeah. That every difficult circumstance, no matter how awful, is being used by him for our good and his glory. That's right. Amen. 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 <clears throat> but let me be honest, it isn't always easy to trust God during difficult times. First, because we might not have the right perspective of the Lord. We may not trust his heart and his love. Instead, we see him as trying to discipline us. Uh, he's angry with, you know, something we did. Uh, so remind me of my kids sometime. I stress keeping their room clean, clean it, doing the chores around the house, uh, having good grades, uh, gaining convictions. When we, so we added something to our midweek devotion. We go around starting from either the left or the right on a scale of one to 10, how you doing mentally? What your thoughts been like? How's school? What about your friends? How they been treating you? You know, we, we do that. And, um, amen. amen. So, uh, lost my train of thought, but. Okay, yeah, our kids, my kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> All right. I was talking about the things we stress in our household, the priority. They may ask for something, I still may say no. The mom still may say no. And they're like, dang, I did everything right. Why I can't have it? When all we're trying to do is have your best interest. Just because you did that, don't mean that's what you're supposed to have. Same thing with God. You know, what about if he gave us everything that we ask for? Sometimes I, I'm, they might ask for something and I might let them have it. And they'd be like, uh, I don't want that anymore. Nope, you asked for it. You're going to deal with it now. <laughs> what, don't God do that sometimes? This is what you wanted. You know? <laughs> right. All right. Turn with me to the book of James, starting at chap chapter one, starting at verse two. says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So if we have the wrong view of God, when we go through troubles, we won't be able to count it all joy. And we won't be able to see that his discipline is done in love. Instead, we blame him, become angry with him, maybe even feel betrayed and abandoned and walk away. But the Lord wants us to have a deep conviction. Mark used that all the time. We, we must gain these convictions. We have to gain deep convictions that we are held in his, his hands and that we still are blessed in difficult times. How many of us been broken before? How many of us been lied to, uh, felt abandoned? Look at us today. Look where we at. You know, God takes that that you may feel 
Uh, I know TJ talk, talked about being worthy. God, what you feel unworthy, what you feel like you 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 not uh, worth, God sees all that and say you are plus plus more. Amen. You, you, but <clears throat> those are the thoughts. That's what we got to fill our hearts with. You know, we can't go around here listening to, like I say, any and everything on social media. Right. Uh, you know, gossip and garbage that's countering what we what we just heard. You know, we can't sit here today, amen and nine, and then walk out the door. The first hit of adversity that may be something you always deal with and just knock you back on your feet. I mean, on your butt again. No, you we we need that reminder, but you got to grab that reminder and, and run with it. You know? So. James one, um, James chapter one, verse twelve says, "Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him." Amen. So James knew that becoming a Christian does not make life easier. So I'm gonna elaborate. In fact, sometimes our beliefs can make life more difficult. Hard times come to anyone and everyone. And remaining steadfast and trusting in God's grace can be challenging. Right. So here's a scenario. The sun. Let's imagine the sun that shines bright. You say you, my wife opened the blinds. Oh, she just like the sunlight beaming in the bedroom. <laughs> the sun. <laughs> it doesn't change. It's, it's going to always be bright. It's always going to be the same color. It's going to shine steadily until it's time to go down. But when it's up there, it's shining. It's bright. No matter what. It's what comes between us and the sun that affects how we react to it. The clouds build up. Storms occur. And it makes us miserable because we can't see the sun. Likewise, when calamities land on us, they can darken our view of God. Persevering in our faith is harder than the trials we're going through. Just holding on is harder than it, you know, the, the challenge itself. Yeah. We need to remember that God blesses those who endure. Yeah. We, we have to remain faithful and rely on his strength and his promises. We will be rewarded. God who shines brighter than the sun, he, he, he don't forget us ever. So just sticking with, you know, how, why do God discipline us? Turn to Hebrews 12, verse 10. Amen. It says, God disciplined us for our good that we may share in his holiness. The purpose of God's discipline is to never punish. Punishment is rooted in fear, but God's discipline is rooted in love because love is who he is. Discipline is never to subtract from us, to take away from us, but it's to add us so we become more like Christ. Even if that means God is removing bad habits or ungodly behaviors from us by disciplining us. So if the purpose of hardship is for us to share his holiness, we must know that God knows exactly what kind of hardship and how much hardship to allow in our lives to make us more like him. Because we all face hardship, but we don't face the same thing. You know, he knows what to give each each individual to make them make him make a, um, you or me more like him uh, <clears throat> he said he'll never give us more than we can handle and you know we always say that I used to read that scripture God say he'll never give me more than we can handle but then here I go trying to handle it but he said, that's with his power not mine so it, that's when we confuse ourselves and be like, I thought you weren't going to give me more. Than, well, you try to deal with it by yourself. You can't you, you, you can't do that. So during our times of discipline, it can be very difficult to see what God is doing. So it, it's every time, every time this happens, we I'm going through something. And you look back after you don't went through it and you can see how he was molding and shaping and changing you. Right. You didn't feel that when you was going through it, but when you look back, you're like, oh, that's what God was doing. Okay. Yeah. You know? And it's, like I say, 
only after we move through that storm that we can see the purpose. Mm -hmm. But now, if you heard what I just said, you face something, you know, later on in the day, you can remember that it, God knows what he's doing. You don't have to wait till after. You can know that moment that you're going to get through it and be better. That's right. So, so, and as a result, not only that, your relationship with Christ becomes much stronger. Your faith, you, your experience of having greater faith, you know. Turn with me to Lamentations chapter 3, starting at verse 22. So begin, as I begin to close. So, it says, because of the Lord's great love, we're not consumed. For his compassion, his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I'll wait for him. It's okay to talk to God when you're going through and you experience hardships in your life. If, you, if, you, if, if we're experiencing difficult times, tell him you trust him. Not why me or when is it going to be over. Lord, I trust you. I know you got me. His word, it never been inviolate. So where does the doubt come in? I know Tim talked about that. We gotta carry it. We gotta we gotta carry the the, the word what it's at all times. Amen. Uh, it's like what's up? <laughs> it's like nowadays when you leave the house and you don't have your phone, you're like, oh the word it works the same way. You gotta yeah. you gotta keep it with you at all times to because you never know what's coming around the corner. Right. All right. So a little tips that I had to help see blessings and hardship. Don't let problems consume your thoughts. It's easy to focus on the bad things, but the, that does nothing to fix the, um, the, the fix the situation or alleviate the stress. Look for the benefits, even if they're very small. Blessings don't need to be big. Uh, even small blessings are worth our attention. Spend time with people who are experiencing joy, who are actually carrying a, a joyful spirit. <clears throat> the more we associate with people like that, the more they influence us. Don't listen to yourself, but God's voice. How many times we play that game in our head? Um, God's voice may seem like a faint whisper compared to the I, mean, I don't know if all of us been to a concert, but like a concert, you, that's loud, obnoxious, but God is like a, like a little, hey, you know, let me, it's, I know what I'm talking about. Help me out. <laughs> spend, spend time reading the Bible, reading the word. God, like I say, God gave us his word for more than carrying it to church. <laughs> he's, he's, he speaks through it so to help hear him you gotta read his word and to God be the glory amen thank you and with that let's go ahead and pray Father we come before you this morning Tell you thank you, Lord, for another time to be here receiving uh, wisdom from your word. Yes. Lord, it's just so much we could thank you for, Lord. Yes. And be here forever. Thank you for all you've done. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the, the faces that we've been praying for that we see in the day, the, yes. the day in the church. Yes. Uh, we pray for those that are still not here. Yes. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling to just have that relationship with you. We thank you for the new baptisms, Lord. Thank you for Reuben and his wife and his family. Lord, thank you for the leadership. Thank you for all the su success you allow the um, RCC to have. Lord, I ask that you be with our families, be with our coworkers, be with those who are around us, Lord. Help us to be a good example to them, drawing them near to you. Lord, be with us um, remainder of this day. 
keep us safe from our harm and danger. And bless us to, to smile and grab hold to your word. More of you and less of what's in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Uh, let's show Brian a little bit more love. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, you know, it takes a lot of heart and guts to come up here and, and share your thoughts and convictions about everything, where, where you, you know, who you are before God. And um, it's, it's amazing to see um, men of God who want to serve and who have very busy lives, who have needs that they always are constantly trying to meet, but still when asked to do something, they're willing to give that extra. And God has uh, really blessed us with uh, men like that in the church. And, and thank you again, Brian, for, for sharing your heart. You know, I wrote down a few things that, that were, uh, as a response I'm going to share, that I thought were extremely powerful. My name is Jamie Watkins, if you didn't know me. I uh, apologize for that. But I just want to share the things that I took away from the message. I hope you uh, had, a, had similar feelings and thoughts. And, um, you know, I kind of see this as like a T-shirt or bumper sticker message. There are some things that he said in there, and I said, oh, man, that's so good. And I'm just jotting it down, writing it down. But the bottom line is, Brian is a man of God who wants us to follow God. And that's, that's the beauty of his message and, and the idea behind um, being disciplined. But a few things I want to share with you all. When he spoke about, um, in Romans 8, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. That is such a powerful scripture. Like that is all the more reason for us to constantly find time to be with God. Yeah. It's okay to, um, you know, we, we are here to help build God's kingdom as a church, but you will fall if you don't independently on your own right. make time for your relationship with God. It's yeah. the bottom line. You will become the person you, be, you were before you knew God if you consistently miss your opportunity to be with God on a daily basis. That really stood out to me. Also, uh, when he describes Satan, um, to me, he, he said, the daily attempts to take our focus off of the creator. What are the little distractions that make us not be disciplined? Brown was bringing that to our attention. That's a, that's a very powerful thing. Also, like when he spoke about God can use any difficult circumstance to discipline us. And the discipline is to make us better. It is God saying, you're not where you quite need to be. I'm going to help you get better through this situation. Brian, thank you so much for sharing your heart with that. And I, I love the example, you know, in the same way that Jesus used examples of like farming and, and like labor as analogies for, for us. I think even the example Brian used about the weather or, or the sun is powerful. And it made me draw down the, the question to myself, what is keeping me from seeing the sun? Right, if, 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 if for me, I was imagining if God is the sun, what is consistent, it's the same all the time. What is the weather that, that comes in the way? What is the rain that allows me to not see the sun all the time? I love this, the, the portion about um, in, in Hebrews 12, discipline producing a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have um, been trained by it. Most people hate the word discipline. Doesn't it sound bad? Are oh, you gonna get disciplined? Ah, you know you're afraid of it, but that's the thing that helps you become what you need to be. It's what we need, and there's nothing wrong with saying that we need to be spiritually disciplined and not spiritually lazy. Because I really believe that Satan has tricked so many of us, whether it be not just the church but just in the world, to believe in that you can be lackadaisical and cavalier in your walk and still have a, a good expectation in the end. We can't be that way. Amen? Amen. The last thing I'll say that uh, really um, stood out to me, and, and thank you so much, Brian, for saying this, another T-shirt, a bumper sticker for me, it said, God gave us his word for more than just carrying the church. Amen. It's the truth. <laughs> we have to use that sword. So thank you so much uh, for, for uh, loving us and giving us that message. So aside from that, I want to uh, offer a few announcements to the church uh, in preparation for uh, this upcoming week and obviously the weeks to, become, uh, weeks to come. Make sure that we're focused and, and, and uh, being a part of the midweek services. Yes. All right. So we have, amen. We have Tremaine and Tim who are going to be offering the messages for September. All right. So let's make sure we as a family are, are, are part of those 
and uh, finding days and, and hours that we set aside for that because that is special. That's something that's going to help us be disciplined. You know, if we can spend time playing video games or doing YouTube or watching our favorite show, we can devote time to hearing our brothers who pour their hearts out in preparation to help us get to heaven. Amen. <laughs> And for the month of October, we're going to have Zoom meetings. So the men are going to meet at 7 p.m. on Zoom, which you'll get more information about that later. Yep. But just, just so you know, 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, the men will meet, and Mark will be uh, facilitating and leading that. Amen. And then on Wednesdays, the very next day, the women will meet at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And Mark will also be a part of that, but obviously Benita is going to be, uh, they'll be, both be leading the charge. Yeah, yeah. Benita will be taking the women, okay. so taking the men. Okay, all right, okay, I misunderstood. <laughs> so Benita will be leading the charge on Wednesdays. <laughs> Thank you, Benita, for that. And uh, with that, maybe, uh, Daryl, maybe you could go ahead and come to the front as uh, you'll be closing us down in prayer. Amen. Man, my brother Mark, it's something that we have a minister here at RCC that we can, uh, he can come down to our level. You know, sometimes you get so high and you can't talk to that person so high, but we got a minister that he can come down to our level. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That uh, uh, The thing came on my mind as uh, Brian was preaching uh, the anointing, in the way I was sitting there, you know, let your anointing speak through me. That was that what I was saying, that was been done to me through, through, uh, Zoom, through, through uh, group me, you know, uh, uh, Tim. Uh, Ken, uh, uh, Sour, uh, 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 my man, my man uh, I almost got my man name. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, Chris, uh, 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 Jermaine, uh, JC, all you guys who prayed for me. You know, that anointing that when you were praying, that's what we do when we, that anointing is sent out healing. That's something that God gives us. So I say, God, give us that. You know, I don't know if Mark did the right thing to let me uh, end the prayer. <laughs> I don't want to have church. I ain't want to have church. I ain't want to have church again. <laughs> I didn't want to have church again. But I just want to let you know that that anointing, you know, and I just started jotting down things. And I jot down things now because I don't remember it quick. You know, I can think of something and couple of seconds from now, I forgot it. So I write things down a lot now. So I won't forget. Um, and, you know, I, if you're sitting on a road, touch somebody. If, if you're sitting on that road, because I guess you believe, I don't know if we can do that or not, Mark, but just imagine we touching the grin at, at this time. Amen. Okay. Amen. Imagine that we're touching the grin. Uh, Lord, we declare <laughs> we are overcomers. Brian, you, 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 you said it, bro. We are overcomers. We're more than conquerors. The greater one lives in us. <laughs> we are the temple of the living God. <laughs> God promised to never leave us. Hey, hey. <laughs> or forsake us. <laughs> That's why I count it all joy. Amen. <laughs> Your protection, Lord God. You protect us, Lord, until we meet again. Let us go through this week, Lord God, uh, 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 spreading that seed that my, my son Ken talked about. And not only spreading that, that seed, that word, Lord God, we're going to tend to it. Just don't say the word and preach the word, but go back and make sure that someone have that understanding, Lord God. I just thank you, Lord God. God, can you... Uh, 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 I know my, my, my sister here, uh, uh, Willie wife, Lord God, just to let you know, <laughs> God can do immeasurable more than we can ever imagine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. More than, yeah, I'm standing here as a witness right now. God can turn a situation around in a moment. Send us out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.